Hello everyone, how are you all? This is God Desires Mercy and Sacrifice Movement from England. Why do we always talk about love for one another? Because also, if you go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, it says that all the law is fulfilled in one word, that we shall love our neighbor as we love ourselves, that if we keep condemning and destroying one another, that we shall watch out, that we shall completely destroy one another. So, but where is that love, even amongst believers, amongst themselves? To the extent that you will be seeing believers who curse one another, you will be seeing believers who give one another death threats. Is that supposed to be seen amongst the, be the believers? Where is the love? So, if you go to internet, on 8th of September, 2020, you will see an American-based Ghanaian pastor who shot his wife death to death in, in public. He shot his wife seven times. So, I even have the video in case anyone who wants me to send the video to him or her individually where the pastor was telling the brother-in-law that he will kill his wife, which he eventually killed her, to the extent that he was telling the brother-in-law that his wife is a witch which is the pastor's wife he was the pastor was saying that his own wife is a witch now some of these pastors who say that their wives are witch or that someone else that christ came to die for in the new testament is a witch if you if you ask them why do they say all those things they will quote exodus chapter 22 verse 18 which says suffer not a witch to live now some of all these people or all these pastors who call their fellow human beings a witch before they became stronger in god even they used to some of them they used to blaspheme against the name of god almighty some of them had once said oh god almighty where are you i don't really believe in you again before they now regain their strength and became stronger in god almighty but if you go to Leviticus chapter 24 verse 10 to 23, it says God Almighty commands me and you to stone to death anyone who blasphemes against his name. So by right, according to the same Old Testament and Leviticus 24 as I quoted, the pastors are not supposed to be alive according to the Old Testament. If you also read Numbers chapter 15 verse 32 to 36, God Almighty commanded people like me and you to stone to death anyone who, dis who didn't keep Sabbath day very well, who didn't, who didn't keep it well, people like me and you. So if you want to know about the Sabbath day, go and read Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 to 11. If we are to be judged by the Old Testament, God Almighty commanded people like me and you to stone to death anyone that didn't keep it well. He didn't say that him, God Almighty, will stone the people to death, but me and you go and verify all these things that I'm, that I'm preaching, that I'm quoting. So by law, none of us is supposed to be alive today because according to Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 to 11, I may say that everyone on earth had once spoiled Sabbath day before. So, because of all this Old Testament law that allowed people like me and you to kill each other who didn't observe those laws well, or because of all this Old Testament law that allowed people like me and you to call one another witch in Exodus chapter 22 verse 18 to kill anyone that witch used in the Old Testament because of all these laws, Paul wrote in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14 that we are no more under the law. So point of correction, when Paul says that we are no more under the law, it doesn't mean that we shall throw away Old Testament scriptures, but it is specifically pointing mostly to this law that used to give human beings like me and you permission to kill one another. So please, it doesn't mean that we shall throw away Old Testament, no. So, suffer not a witch to live was only recorded in the Old Testament Exodus chapter 22 verse 18. 
it wasn't recorded in the New Testament. So if any pastor or anybody uses that Old Testament law to call one another witch and condemns the person in the New Testament, those are why Galatians chapter 5 verse 4 says that anyone who continues to justify himself with all those law cuts himself away from grace and cuts himself away from Christ. And you know that what that means. If someone is cut away from grace, he may not be able to make heaven because everyone needs grace from Christ to be able to make heaven. So those are why Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, if you use Good News Bible to read it, it will explain it well. It says that we are not fighting against human beings enemies, but we are fighting against principalities and powers which means which are inside human beings but not human beings themselves human beings are not witch but the witchy spirit live inside them which can be chased out as christ says in the book of matthew chapter 10 verse 6 to 8 so yes pray against satanic powers but not against human beings those are why when christ called peter satan in the book of matthew chapter 16 verse 23 it doesn't mean that peter was satan but satanic witches was inside him but the good part is that romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 14 says that therefore now there is no condemnation against those in christ jesus those who do not do what they want but those who are led by by the holy spirit that if we do what we want that we shall die so christ says in the book of luke chapter 10 that he has given us power to overcome all the powers of enemies so if anyone is is afraid of which which means that person is doesn't know christ so as christ says in the book of matthew chapter 6 verse 14 to 15 that if we do not forgive our human enemies that god almighty shall never forgive us too so if anyone uses good news bible for better understanding which we explain matthew chapter 5 verse 38 to 48 which christ says dear that we shall love our human enemies that we shall never pay them evil with evil so if someone calls a sinner that christ jesus died for a witch and condemns the person or if someone prays back to sender against a sinner that christ died for the person may end up in hellfire through all those prayer or through all those saying because once a sinner has no right to condemn any sinner because we too need grace from christ to be able to make heaven though to learn more about this visit our website which is called www.unforgivenessleadstohell.com it will teach you more about all this topic remember christ says in the book of matthew chapter 7 verse 15 to 23 that even those who believe in him who do not live righteously shall never make heaven so everyone should repent to avoid hellfire if you use new living translation bible for better understanding which explains matthew chapter 23 verse 15 more than how king james version and other bible versions explains it Christ says there that many teachers of religious law lead many people to hellfire as them themselves are. So what am I trying to say? If you take this kind of message to some pastors who do not really un understand Christ, they may tell you a lie and condemn this kind, of, this kind of message. But if you take it to Christ, maybe in the dream, beg him to, to show you in the dream if this message that I preached is true. If he tells you that it is true, after you must have confirmed it in the scriptures, please, for your own betterment, obey it for you to be able to make heaven. So, like American-based Ghanaian pastor called Mr. Sylvester Afori, who is a 35-year-old man who looked his wife and called his wife a witch and ended up killing her. The same way many pastors even still need to learn all these things that I'm preaching so that they may not end up calling their wives or even a sinner that Christ died for. They may not end up, end up calling the sinner a witch and condemn the person like Sylvester Ofori condemned his wife. 
because he saw his wife as a witch. Point of correction, I do not mean that anyone should be coming to my church because I don't have any physical church temple in this world. But my church is everyone who loves God Almighty and who loves his fellow human being, every human being, and also who preaches. So this kind of message is scarce even amongst many preachers. So anyone who sees this kind of message and clicks only like on Facebook has not done his neighbor a favor. So I plead with everyone, if you like this kind of message, preach it to everyone. Or if you can't preach it, share the moment I, I preach so that in order to help others as well to make heaven, if you really want them to make heaven. Jeremiah 17 verse 5 to 9 says that only the heavenly Lord of Lords that can never fail you, but that any human being at all may fail you. So if Peter, our first pastor, ordained by Christ himself, could deny Christ and after the death of Christ, he was deceiving some Christ's followers. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 11 to 14, any pastor may deceive anybody also like peter did if the pastor is not at watch that is why everybody needs to be studying all the words of christ in the bible every day and be obeying them without depending on any human being and without just only depending on any pastor at all to be able to test our spirits as first john 4 1 says pray daily that christ leads you to heaven he says in john 14 verse 6 to 24 that he is the only one that any human being needs to get to god almighty that any human being at all who is willing can do more than him so if you can do more than christ who has died for you in the new testament you can also do more than any pastor at all if you can personally be studying our Christ's words in the Bible and obey them. So if you don't see a good church, start one from your house. Welcome everybody for freely giving you all our messages. Call us on 0044-7931626513. Always click on the share button to share our preaching with everyone on different social media platforms in order to help them to make heaven. Our YouTube channel to follow us is called Apostle Ugo Ndo. May God Almighty bless you.